Greetings from Talent Battle. Hello everyone. I am Rohit from Talent Battle and I welcome you all for our new video regarding TCS digital role for advanced section. Now you all know that TCS has started the hiring process and this time they are dealing with integrated test pattern which consists of two sections. First one is foundation and second one is advanced. So if you want that your profile should be gone for digital role, you have to clear the advanced section as well, which consists of advanced coding for 2023 batch. So in this video, we are going to solve the previously asked questions. And this video will definitely help you to prepare for the same. For betterment, you can join our TCS masterclass training specifically where we cover all the previous year questions. And to get the constant updates about the placement process, you can join our social media handles, telegram groups, Instagram pages and WhatsApp group where we constantly update the placement preparation updates and off campus updates as well. Links to all these handles is already provided in the video description. So just go and check it. So before we start, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel as well and press the bell icon for instant notification. So let us start with the actual content for this video. So the question that has been provided here that we will be targeting now. The difficulty level will be medium to high. So if your foundations and fundamental things are clear, you can easily solve those questions. Try to develop the logic, read the question carefully, analyze all the given conditions, the sample test cases. And then once your steps are ready, logical development steps are ready, then you can write down the code, which will satisfy all the provided test cases. So the question is given an array of n integers and one more value they have provided that is positive integer value k. So we have two inputs. One is my array of n integers and second is a positive integer value that is k. And our task is to rotate the array clockwise by k value. So k value is playing a role here with the help of which we are going to rotate the array in clockwise direction. The first sample test case is provided with the input value of n that is 5. So 5 elements will be there like this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And value of k is given as 2. So if we analyze this particular test case, as per the given problem statement, we need to identify the approach that will deal for rotation of the array. In second sample test case, we have value of n as 4, 4 elements are there and the value of k is 1. So we will first develop the logic for the provided test cases. And we will also discuss the condition where if the value of k is greater than n, then what we can do. Okay. So let us go to the logical explanation of this particular example. So as per our first sample test case, my value of n is equals to 5. And the array elements, if I write down it in the array structure, that is 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. And value of k is equals to 2. And we want the rotation. So as the value of k is equals to 2, we can perform the logic of shifting every element by 2. So if I go with that logic, shifting every element by 2, my structure will be like this. 10 will be shifted here, 20 will be shifted here, right? And 30 will be shifted here. And what about 40 and 50? Those two elements will again go back to these positions here. And then my structure will be like this after shifting like 40 will take the place then 50 will be here and then 10 20 and 30 and this is what our expected output so if i store the element as per the given value right so we can replace that by performing the shifting logic. So if 
I take the same test case again where my elements are organized like this initially and the value of k is equals to 2. So if I target these two elements where my k is equals to 2, two elements are there. Because if you take the final output into consideration, you can see the position of these two elements has been changed. Now as per the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and n is equals to 5. So from 0 to n minus 1, this is my total range. But if I take last two elements because my k value is given 2, so this is totally depend on the k value. If last two elements if I consider and if I perform the rotation operation based on this logic k is equals to 2. So my range should start from 0 to particular value that is 2. So how it is obtained? If I take n minus k, if I take n minus k, this is what I am talking about the conditions that we are going to use for our coding. So if I take n minus k, it will give me 5 minus 2 that is 3. But I don't want this index. I want up to this index only. So I will apply the logic of n minus k plus i because i will be changing every time. So this logic we will use. Then once my n minus k plus i is there, the rotation will happen and every time when I rotate it, the condition of k will be considered. You can have another approach by applying reverse functionality also. That will also work, right? So what are my steps that I will follow for the solution of this problem, right? First, I will write down my input elements, input array, as well as n value, as well as k value. I will take all these values as an input. Then I will store my final result and I will call store final results and call the function which will takes place of this rotation and call the rotate function suppose. I am having rotate function so that I am going to call. This rotate function will take three inputs. First one is array, then value of n and value of k. Now already we have this. So we can pass this as an parameters of the rotate function. Now here the important thing is if my value of k is greater than n, then what you will do? Suppose my n is 5 here and k is 6, then you don't have that much amount of element. So we have to reduce, we have to perform the reduction in value k, reduction in k. And how you can do that? You can apply the simple logic of modulus division. So I can apply the case of k is equals to new k I will be getting that is k modulus n. This is what you have to do because as per the sample test cases if we go we have both the test cases where k value is less but we have to write down the generalized code for satisfaction of hidden test cases also. So that's why this condition is important. Then we will take one uh, temporary array for storing the results right so make it a temporary array for storing the results. I am writing these steps very explicitly because once these logical steps are ready then you can easily write down the code by following this because most of the students have always faced this issue that sir we understand the problem we understand the logic also but we are unable to write down the code. So this is the solution that you can have approach building logical approach building where we will write down all the steps as per our discussion as per our the logic explanation and then it will be helping us to write down the code. Now once my temporary array for storing the results is ready, I will just apply this condition. This is our heart of the program. n minus k plus i. At this particular index, I will identify the elements and that will be stored by with to my temporary array. Now for traversal, again we have to take one index position that is for example 0 initialized to 0. And based on this index variable, we will transfer my modified elements because after this n minus k plus i, the position will be changed and then that modify will be transferred to my temporary array and we will return it from the function. 
so now my function is ready with these steps now the last step of the function is return temporary array finalize temporary array to my function from where we have called it now there we have to just accept that elements and we have to use a simple for loop for display the contents right so these are my steps so in every coding parameter every advanced coding if you take or any normal approach once your steps are ready easily you can write down the case right so i hope the logical explanation is clear and you can apply this logic for any particular provided test case that will also work now let us write down the code and again i will be explaining the code line by line so most of the students were expecting that i should write down the code in java language so i am using the same don't worry about the programming language if you are dealing with c++ or python you can just quickly apply the same logic only syntactical differences will be there the logic will remain same so let us start with java so first i will import it then i will take one class the name of my file is new main so i am taking new main class and here i am going to write my function rotate and as we discuss this function will accept my three elements first one is array then second one is value of n and third one is value of k right now first we will write down our main function as per the steps we will accept it now here to save the time i am quickly giving you the static input cases you can modify the program for user input also again it will not affect our logic it will work in the same fashion so quickly write down the main function public static void main where first i am taking array and as per my provided test case i am having five elements 10 20 30 40 and 50 okay then we have to accept value of n also that is 5 and value of k also that is 2 as per the provided test case now i will take one uh, final answer array and this will be transferring my control to rotate function which will accept three parameters value of array value of n and value of k okay now my control will go to rotate and there we will write down our logic once that function will return my array i will just apply a normal for loop which will starts from 0 to less than n and which will print my results system dot out dot print and i will use some formatting here and based on the index i it will print the entire array okay a uh, little bit syntactical changes okay now coming back to our rotate functionality so as per our steps what we have discussed is first we accepted the input array value of n and k also we accept then we store one final results and we are calling the rotate functionality with three parameters and now this step you have to write in the rotate function first condition will be k greater than n so if my value of k is greater than n then we have to take the modulus division okay now i am allocating size here as per the value of n 
and then my for loop i is equals to 0 i less than k and i plus plus inside this for loop the main part that my array will get the position at respective index i from my original array where my condition will be n minus k plus i see because n minus k if i take it will not give me the appropriate value so i am adding my index position to it so n minus k plus i right then i will require one index variable that is initialized to 0 and i will be utilizing it again in for loop now this for loop will traverse from i is equals to k to i less than n and inside this my element for final answer with index position i will get from my original array where my index is there because i have to just transfer it right So from k to less than n, I am initializing it and transferring the data to my final array. Now once this for loop is ready, I have to just return my answer. Return final answer. Okay. Now my function is ready. See, first I have taken the condition of k greater than n. With modulus division, I am reducing it. Then I take my final answer temporary array. Then I traverse with my condition n minus k plus i. This will give me a particular index position from my original array and that I am transferring to my final answer. So I am just shifting it. Now in my main function, uh, I need to check what is missing. Okay, it is outside class. So I will just make it inside the class. So array input is ready, value of n and 5k is ready. I'm calling the function and I'm printing the answer. So let's check the output first and then I will explain line by line. So if I execute this, uh, okay. Now once you execute it, you got the answer 40, 50, 10, 20, 30. This was our expected results. Okay. Now line by line, what will happen? First, my array will be taken as an input 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Then I will call the rotate function. So my control will go here where value of n is 5 and k is 2. It will come here. First, I will check the condition of k. Now, in our case, this is not valid. So, I will go to my final answer. Here, my array of n minus k. So, what is the value of n? 5. 5 minus k is 2. So, 5 minus 2, 3 plus current value of i. That is 0. Next time, it will be 1. Next time, it will be 2. Like this, the value of i will be going. But as k is 2, so my condition is i less than k. So, it will only behave up to the value of k that much amount of elements i have to transfer right then my index position is initialized to zero again and i am using that index for the original array and transferring the contents to final answer but here again my i starts from k so i am shifting those two values 
and then rest of the elements as per the same sequence so it is giving me the rotation and then this value is written here right so in this way we can deal with the rotation functionality and my output is again expected output as per the given logic the simple test case second where consist of four elements and value of k is 1 so let us try this input now I will change a little bit in the static input now four elements value of n will become four value of k will become one and then execute it see same output expected output 40 10 20 and 30 so easily if you have the basic understanding about array functionality and once you understand this logic how to change the element position rotation then easily you can write down the code so i hope you got the idea about the logical explanation as well as understanding of the code same logic you can apply in other programming language also and that will help you to solve the question so that's it for this video thank you for listening till the end and i hope your doubts are clear don't forget to subscribe our channel for further updates thank you